I uh, appreciate that, Coach Sisk. I uh, just want to, uh, man, I tell you what, I've got a lot of notes. I've been taking notes as well, and I told John and Chris Dantzler, Hammer Strength, when I come today, I'm going to have six slides, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal from everybody else because, uh, you know, we're always in that learning process, and, and I'm just trying to learn more and more to, to help our, our athletes, our players, uh, be the uh, very best that they can be. So, again, a special thanks to Hammer Strength and uh, Georgia, Georgia State and, and Coach Sisk and everybody involved. I have some former uh, uh, players here. I have some former coaches here that have moved on. And uh, people ask me, well, how, how do you, you stayed in it so long, how'd you do it? And I said, I outlived about the rest of them, I guess. Just outlived everybody else. So, but I've been very, very fortunate, been around a lot of, uh, of great men, a lot of great uh, coaches, and uh, so I've tried to surround myself with good people. And to me, that's where it all begins. That, that Paul right there is uh, important to me. But one thing I found out through the years is that logo that we wear, sometimes that, that logo may let you down, but it's those relationships and those people and those athletes you train along the way that go far beyond um, that, uh, that logo. So we're going to get started. Just going to talk about, um, my, I guess the best thing that I do is just organization and managing and kind of setting things up. And that's probably what, what I do the best. So today I'm just going to kind of go through our program. The first part may be a little boring to you, but I think it's very important to set the foundation for, for where it all starts. And for me, you know, it all starts with, with our head coach. You know, he, he's the leader of the program. I'm just an extension uh, of him. I'm his mouthpiece. I'm his voice. So everything <clears throat> really begins with him. Uh, I like this uh, thing of John Gordon. We follow John. He comes and speaks to our team, probably like he, he may do many of y'all. But he said, many try to reverse engineer someone's success by studying their routines. But it's not the routine uh, that makes someone successful. It's the passion, the spirit, the love, the purpose, and the intention that drives the routine. So, you know, as you hear a lot, all, all the things that you'll hear today, you can take all these programs and you can apply it. And I guarantee you, every one of them is going to work, work for you. But the ones that's going to work the best for you is the ones that you believe in the most and the one that, that your athletes believe. And you pour in, uh, to, it takes a lot of energy, pouring into those athletes, pouring into your staff, doing it with some passion and energy. So that they'll, you know, they are very trusting of you as a coach. But we're, we're learning a lot today, learning a lot from people. And uh, so that's kind of where it starts for me. I was at the Citadel, Newberry College, went to Clemson around 1985 as a graduate assistant. I actually come from the Nebraska tree. Uh, Gary Wade was uh, the head strength coach at Clemson, gave me my opportunity. Matter of fact, a group from Nebraska is coming in Monday to visit, and Coach Epley is going to be in that, uh, in that group, so I'm looking forward to seeing him. Just a part of that Nebraska tree back in the, I don't know, 70s when they were so dominant and the Husker power and all that kind of stuff. So that's where I kind of learned a lot early as a strength coach. My first job was at Bowling Green State University. And back when I got started, not every school had a strength coach. And I was in the Mid-American Conference, and I had an opportunity to go to Bowling Green. They showed me the weight room. It was two empty racquetball courts with some uh, like two benches and two wooden platforms and a bunch of metal plates. That's how I got started with 18 varsity sports, and my assistant was a tennis coach. And that's how I began working. Um, so I, I did the Bowling Green thing. We had a... Uh, a lot of success there. We, we won a bowl game my last year, went out to California, won a bowl game, had the opportunity uh, to go back home down to South Carolina, worked with a guy named Eric Fears at South Carolina's assistant director, and then on to Furman University. At Furman, I was the first strength coach at Furman University. And again, I didn't have much of a weight room, uh, probably half the size of this room, about 14 varsity sports. So, you know, just had to make it happen with, with no help. And that's where Coach Sis came in and uh, I told him, he, I, I wrote his contract. You got three hots in a cot. That's all we can offer you. You get three hots in a cot. You get three meals a day. I ain't making no money. I'll feed you. We'll find a place for you to live. And that's, we'll get you started. And then I had the opportunity to go to Clemson around 1997 as the director of all the programming. It, we decentralized, it got so big, so now it's just uh, football for the last uh, about 23 years. Uh, just some things I'm really proud of. Uh, just had a few more last night drafted. It's 
those numbers are important to me. It's, I think it's good to, as you kind of build your legacy, the things you're able to do and accomplish, the lives you touch. Uh, that's a pretty cool thing there. Uh, but when it comes to this part right here is most important to me is the legacy that you will leave as a coach. I think you'll leave a, you'll leave a, a living legacy, what you're doing now, then the legacy that you leave behind. And not just pouring so much into that weight room or into that football in that classroom that you neglect uh, those two things right here. These two, that's my sons. That's Michael. He's uh, graduating in August. He was a backup punter for us. Uh, and this is Ben. Ben is a freshman uh, quarterback at Clemson. He's in the room with a lot of NFL guys, does a, a great job, loves lifting, was going to be here today, but couldn't quite get here in time from class, but wants to be a strength coach and has a great passion uh, for what we do. So all this stuff over here, all the guys that's come through and had the opportunity to go coach these places, the thing that, that, that I put my priority on is my family and my faith first. And I think that's why I've been able to stay in this business so long is just keeping a proper perspective on what's going on. Like I said earlier, that logo at some point is going to let you down. Some coach at some point is going to let you down. And uh, so just keep that in mind, uh, especially if, you, uh, if you're a young coach. My staff, uh, i got Larry Greenley. He's been with me 23 years. Coach Smotherman's here today. Uh, he's responsible for this PowerPoint, does a tremendous job. Great coach, Coach Hogan. And then Coach Dunn's uh, getting a certification test uh, this weekend. The way I do my staff, I do it like a, like a football staff. So everybody is responsible for groups. So Coach Greenley kind of handles all of our running backs. He handles all of our receivers, and he works with our defensive backs. Coach Smotherman works with our defensive linemen, the D-tackles, our D-ends, works with our specialists. Coach Hogan, his primary responsibility is going to be our offensive linemen and tight ends. Coach Dunn is a little bit of everything, but probably spends the most time uh, with our quarterbacks, him and Coach Winecoop. Coach Winecoop's here. He's a student. He's been with me for four years. And I'll work with the linebackers, kind of an easy group to manage. So we all have our groups that we manage and we work with every day. That way when those players come in, they're going to see the same face, the same coach every day. There's a lot going on, uh, especially when you work with that, that many players, uh, having to make some modifications <clears throat> in their training. I uh, have a beautiful hammer strength facility right here. Uh, it's 25 plus thousand square feet. We've been in there now for for two years, and but this is not where I started. Guys, I started in a room about half this size with no help. So, um, you know, if you're in a situation right now, you say, man, my, I just don't have, the, I don't have the resources. We don't have the weight room. We don't have, but you know what? You just make it happen. 225 in your weight room is no different than 225 in that weight room. The bumper plates I have, they might have a different name on them, but it's no different than the bumper plates that you have in your weight room. So just very blessed to... Uh, to, to have that facility. I coached for 30 years before I had a weight room and an indoor attached. My first 30 years of coaching, I was on a tram running across campus. So uh, I've kind of had to earn it the hard way. And I'm proud of that. And because uh, what happens, a lot of guys that will get in there and they'll come in as grad assistants and students, that's where they start. But they don't understand what the reality is going to be when they step out. You know, they may have to drop back a little bit and uh, have to tough it out a little bit. Uh, we have a beautiful uh, bistro where we feed our players, an indoor, our stadium, and this new operations center now has been going on now for, for a couple of years, and we're continuing to expand that. This is something I asked for two years ago. It's called the Castle. And it's the Clemson Applied Science Lab. Uh, we have infrared beds. Float pods, Normatec massage chairs, uh, 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 Dari, and this guy right here, Alex Bina, we kind of fell on him. He's a grad student at Clemson, does a lot of research for us, gives me a lot of information, a lot of numbers, almost overkill. I mean, I, I, can't, even man I can't handle it sometimes. I'm like, God, he, he handles a lot. And, you know, he's always coming in right when I'm trying to get something done and wants to show me something. But I love Alex, very passionate about what he does. We're actually adding a new addition uh, to that facility on the uh, other side of the weight room. It's going to be even bigger. So we're going to, we're going to try to expand that. All this stuff's good, uh, but it's not going to replace power clean, squat, sprints, and all that good stuff, agility. Kind of the program itself <clears throat> with Coach Sweeney, uh, best is the standard. Best is the standard not just for our players. Best is the standard 
or the coaches. And what you have to learn to do at Clemson, uh, just like you have to do, you got to learn to fight for your job every day. Because I know they're lined up out the door waiting for old Coach B to kind of kick the bucket. They wait for some of those assistants to move out because somebody else wants to move in. But Coach Sweeney challenges us every staff meeting, every team meeting, that best is the standard. That's your best. That's not, that's not somebody else's best. That's being the very best that you can be, being the very best coach you can be, being the uh, very best student that you can be, being the very best player that you can be. His formula for success is pretty easy. Prepare with purpose. That's just having attention to detail, preparing every day with some purpose. Everything that I do has to be, have a purpose and a why behind it because he's going to challenge me on that. Number two, he's got to have effort, tremendous effort with technique, which is going to equal execution. And then the last thing is an all-in commitment. Do your best on and off the field. Do your best on and off the field. Do your best, Coach Batson, in the weight room. In that weight room, outside that weight room. Challenging everybody every day. I'm telling you, he is a, he's a relentless person, but he has great passion and energy and uh, has a tremendous love uh, for people, but very, very uh, demanding, uh, which he should be. This is kind of our little thing that we, he covers probably at least once a month with our team. This is a, what we call the characteristics of the three percenter. The way our culture is at Clemson is designed to force people up. It's forced to squeeze everybody up, okay? Character is going to drive talent, the character of our players, of our coaches, that's going to drive that talent to greatness, okay? So what we've tried to do over the years is try to really do a good job here of kind of cutting this percent down, okay? 27%, let's just say normally, you, you can probably right now you're thinking the troublemaker group. I know uh, players and athletes are coming to mind right now. Yeah, I got that. That's a 27% right there for sure. Then there's that 60% group, you know? They, we, we need less of those. They accept a little mediocrity. They'll kind of do the workout, but they're, uh, they're, they're, they need to be squeezed, need to be pushed up. Then you got your 10 percenters. These are your difference makers. These are your uncommon people. They have a game plan. They have goals. They, they want to achieve. They're problem solvers. And then there's that 3% group. These are your winners, your major game. They have the game plan for life. Man, these people have it figured out. These group right here, you just have them to work out and just supervise the room. They'll take care of the rest. Last year, uh, that team was uh, really phenomenal. I've never been around a group in 33 years, a, a team like that, that you probably was 3% down here and about 27% up here, about 60% here, about 10% here. About 25 to 30 seniors, just laser focused, knew what they wanted to do, unselfish, but uh, that's kind of how, how our program is to squeeze. The way we look at it in the weight room, this group is what we call uh, kind of non-compliant kind of people. You know, they're, they're a little bit of a distraction, okay? They're, uh, this group right here is a little bit more maybe compliant with what you're trying to do. Uh, this group right here is a motivated group, how we label them. And then this group, group right here is what we call driven. This group right here is driven right here. So that's kind of the way we, we look at those guys and we grade them. And uh, we try to work with them to help them be the, the very best they can be. <clears throat> Probably one of the best things that we do is every year in January, Coach Smotherman organizes it. We get the seniors together right before we start winter training. We have a draft. And we, we bring our seniors in, set up the team room for a draft. And we draft teams. We have eight accountability teams. And these teams are going to, they're going to draft our captains. We'll pick captains. They don't know who they're going to be with. So we'll have a, we'll pick, we'll pick captains. And then we start the draft. This is the order that they're picked in. Our team is going to draft these guys by their accountability. Academics, equipment, football, sports, med, strength, nutrition, all the things that's, that, so it's a visual, so it's a snapshot of your program. And we have that first team meeting Coach Sweeney is going to come in in the winter, and he's going to put that on the board, and he's going to go through each and every team, probably spend about 30 minutes or so, talking about the captains, talking about who was picked here as the first draft pick, second draft pick. As you get down here, 
These are the guys that, that boy, he, it really gets rough. You know, it really, you start to see people, as I sit in the back and kind of watch the room, and everybody starts to kind of work their way down. He's going to go really hard here. This thing is set up with a positive and a negative. It's like scales. It's weighted. You can get positive points and help your team, but if you're not doing the right things outside of uh, your responsibility, you're not going to class, you're not going to tutors, you're missing mentor meetings, you're not wearing the right clothes to the weight room, uh, the, your equipment room, your locker looks terrible, then Coach Smotherman is going to log every single day, and it's going, we're going we're to have a little fun with this. So we'll line them up on the, on the sideline, either in the winter workouts, in, the, uh, in spring practice. We'll have accountability runs. And we have an accountability run when Coach Sweeney's running it. He's going to start down here with Team 1. He's going to go down here, and he's going to address the people that are having problems. He's going to come down here to Team 2, and he's going to address and call out the people that are having issues that are causing their team to have to run. He's going to do that all the way down the line, then we'll do our run. Probably one of the most important things we do as a program to give everybody an idea, very transparent. This is, this is our program. This is who we are, and uh, this is how we got to how to be a more of a, accountable to each other. Things that we've learned from our players really the last few years, one is you're just selfless. Guys love to see other players have success. They really do. They love to see each other succeed. Uh, they expect to win, and that just doesn't happen overnight. You know, 23 years there, those first, you know, 10, 15 years or so, it was, you know, we were okay, but now there's an expectation. They have an expectation to win because of the culture they're in and the success they had. Now, that's good and bad. You got a lot of young guys come in. They think everything's just a layup. I mean, it's a little layup on the backboard, a little layup. But it, it don't work that way. It's taken a lot of hard work from a, from a lot of uh, players and coaches from the, from the years past. But they do expect to win. They do have an expectation. Uh, accountability is just not from the coaches. We talked about that. They hold each other accountable. Uh, cultural replication. It starts over every year. It's a new journey. It's a new challenge. There's new demands placed on the team. Last year's team was more like a professional team, the way we could manage them, the leadership. This year is going to take more control on our part and my staff's part. We're going to have to control things more until we can hand it over to them uh, in the fall. Uh, just model extra work. They model it, extra work, the grind. They really, what it looks like. Uh, they've showed us that. They want to be coached. They desire to be coached. And, they, uh, and we do that. We coach them up. The body and mind can adapt to about anything. These guys can handle about anything that you throw at them. As long as it's progressive, as long as you have, you have a good plan, you progress things, and they're, they're uh, willing to be challenged um, as, a, as a group. Christian Wilkins got drafted last night, probably one of the greatest leaders and people that I've ever been around. And this is what he said. And he's talking about team chemistry. He says, you, you try to get to know your teammates outside the sport. When you have a genuine appreciation of where someone comes from, you learn to love and appreciate them even more. You know, when you care for someone off the field, you'll do the same for them on the field. And that's the one thing that that complex has done for us. That's allowed guys to be together more. It's allowed guys to fellowship more. It's allowed guys to get to know uh, each other better, and it's allowed us to know them just outside, outside the weight room. Talking about building the foundation, uh, I think it was, uh, Hurricane Michael came through Mex Mexico Beach, Florida. It's like 36th Avenue here, and that thing was stood. It was built to withstand the toughest storm. I mean, they built that thing to, to, to handle the, the, the toughest blow that, 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 that a hurricane could handle. And you see it still standing because it was built to last. And that's what we've tried to do at Clemson. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be challenges. We know we're going, to, we're going to face tremendous challenges. We can lose players. We can have injuries. We're going to lose games. Things are going to happen. But if you're a foundation and you're built the right way, you'll, you'll be able to withstand uh, those storms when they come. But that one right there was built, uh, built to last. You know, get the right talent. Get the right character. Uh, you got to have good soil, so we're always trying to make sure our soil's good. Everybody's responsible for enriching that soil, especially down in that weight room. That's a part of what we do. 
You're going to build relationships with your players outside the weight room. Work hard. The old is forever new with me. Just continue to master those fundamentals. Serve their heart and not their talent. I think a lot of times we, we get caught up in serving talent and we forget about the heart. But Coach Sweeney really harps on serving that heart and not their talent. Because if you serve their talent, you'll let them get away with things. If you serve their heart and you care about them as people, you'll discipline uh, your athletes. This is our staff right here. Uh, just five edges. These are very simple, but this is things that we just try to really stand on every day. And that's coming in every day with a tremendous attitude and work ethic. Bring me a great attitude. You know, bring me good body language. Bring me work ethic. You'll never have a problem uh, with Coach Batson. Mental, physical, and competitive toughness. Going through your routine, finding ways to be competitive, if you want to be mentally tough, you got to go have to do it through the physical. So we're always preaching mental, physical, and competitive toughness. Discipline and accountability, we talked about already. We have a system in place for that. Win the day with a focused intensity. One thing I try to do is I realize in my life, in my coaching career, I've got more asphalt behind me than I do ahead of me. You know what I mean? So I'm really trying to make sure that every day that I am organized, I have a plan, and I'm focused on that couple of hours in the morning, maybe that two hours in the afternoon. But winning the day, if you continue to win each and every day, and you challenge them each day, and you start putting those days together, you're going to become a winner. But you got to be focused. And there has to be an intensity. And lastly, you earn everything with a focused passion being very passionate about what you do. As the coaches are out on the road right now, I mean, he, he's, coach has really been preaching to our staff, find me character guys. They got to have talent. They got to be good players. They got to love the train. They got to love the game of football. They got to be great students. And man, we'll get to pick it later. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for people that want to grind, that want to work, that love the game of football. It is a tough, tough sport. With everything that's required now, uh, they have to be mentally and physically tough to handle it. As a staff, very for us, is just carry out the head coach's mission. I don't have to reinvent the wheel. Carry out his, the, his mission and mold the team into the personality that he wants. It's not what Coach Batson wants for the team. It's the personality that he wants for the team that's my charge, and that's the charge of my staff. And then as the vision is together, together as a, as a staff, together as a group of players, we're going to work together to build the strongest and the fastest, the most explosive, the best conditioned team in the country. And the only way we can do it is one day at a time. Last year's team and this year's team may be a little bit different, but we just got to help this year's team be the fastest and the strongest and the best. Last year's team was a veteran group. All those seniors, older guys, uh, you know, uh, guys taking coffee breaks at halftime. I mean, it's an old, old bunch. This year they're young, so we gotta we got to kind of implement and, and, and do that kind of stuff. For me, be prepared every day, be consistent every day in your demeanor, how you come in that weight room every day. One thing I, I think an athlete don't want to see is a coach that's inconsistent, inconsistent in your mood, you know, inconsistent in your behavior. If you're a loud uh, high energy type person, and that's your personality, then you better be that way every day. You know, so, you know, if that battery starts to drain, you better charge it back up. So whatever your personality is, you coach to your personality. And you be, you know, if that's you, that's good. If you're not that kind of person, you're more quiet, you're, you're a different kind of coach, you be that guy. But don't try to be somebody that you're not. It won't work. Uh, be the example every day to your staff and to your students, to your athletes. Build and strengthen relationships every day. I really work hard to get out on that floor as they're coming in, going into the indoor to warm up, to kind of, you know, shake hands, just to speak to our guys, make sure I speak to them, talk to them as they're going in to work out, and uh, greet them every day, and then just respecting uh, that finish because that's kind of going to be important for you down the road. Not going to read through all these, but I'd say 1 through 4 and 14, having the heart of a teacher, having that heart of a teacher. And I'm telling you what, sometimes they're hard to teach. You know what I mean? Some of them you have a hard time with. You know, man, you, it, it might take you three or four years where you can finally find a, a love and a, and a passion for that person because they're just hard to deal with. 
Maybe it's your personality. Maybe you just don't. Sometimes things just don't jihad between you and another uh, athlete. But another coach may be able to reach that person. But having that heart of a teacher, being very passionate, enthusiastic about what you do, be organized, have a plan, have a limited amount of time. So, man, we got to go. When we get in that room, our work's planned. We've talked about it. We're ready to go. And then be demanding. You know, that's where the energy comes from, man. Just, it's a battle of wills every day when you go in that room. It's, I hate to say it, but it's kind of them versus you. Kind of their will and what they're willing to put in, what they're willing to do. And then what am I willing to do? What am I willing to give uh, each session, uh, whether it be winter, summer, in season? But be, demand that effort. Be consistent with it. Just make sure every rep, every set, everything counts, okay? Have a good daily focus. And number 14 right here is just love. Such a powerful emotion. You know, I think players want to know that you care about them, that you love them. And, and you know, that's, it's not a, you know, that's got to be kind of a tough love, if you know what I mean. You know, sometimes that love's tough. Sometimes they don't like it. We talk about tough love, but love has to come before tough. So it's love tough. You've got to love them tough. And they'll respect that. I've had kids who were in our program three or four years and maybe feel like I never would reach. They come back with a family, give you a big hug, and you're kind of looking at them like, oh, man, what happened? Well, that love tough thing finally, finally kicked in. Just some very basic principles, just our safety, making sure we educate. We do some PowerPoints, go through some lifts. Uh, we have the same struggles you have, technique, kind of ground zero kind of stuff, uh, progressions, progressive overload, speed training. You know, helping our guys, since the coaches are spread out, everybody working within their limits, uh, very, being very consistent with that time under tension and the recovery piece with it, building a profile. I got to tell them every day, you're going to tell your story. When these scouts start rolling in uh, your junior and senior year, Coach Bass ain't going to have to say a whole lot. I'm going to throw that profile sheet out. That's going to tell your story, what you did, how you worked, how you performed, how you earned it, that's go and what that tape says, okay, I may not have to say anything, but you're going to tell your story. You're going to tell your journey, and there's no excuses because you have every opportunity to be the very best that you can be. And then work on your weaknesses, continue to build on their strengths. Very specific exercises and strength training, things that you know, exercises to enhance explosive power, exercises to develop maximum strength, we just call auxiliary exercises, we call it power bodybuilding to develop more muscle mass, developing the trunk, that 360, we call it core, posterior chain, but we sometimes we refer to it as our trunk, exercises to develop our neck and back. Always remember that speed's the king of all sport, okay? I can't sacrifice size and slowness for speed. I won't be there very long. I have to do a lot of running. And uh, sometimes it may hamper you a little bit on the strength side. It may slow you down a little bit. But, man, I can't substitute uh, the enhancement of speed. So it's very important that they recruit it and that we get good DNA in there and uh, so, I can, uh, so that I have something to work with. Precision, specific work, and then just customizing what these coaches do, my staff, Work with their individual groups, customizing the extra things that they need for their position, working with their position coach to help them uh, be their best. So, uh, as far as just power and strength, uh, just developing, you know, I don't know that word functional we use a lot, but just strong, powerful, explosive guys using a variety of resistance training movements and employing various rep schemes and, and sets to do that. We'll use linear periodization. We'll have a little wave uh, undulatory waves. We'll use some conjugate. We do a little bit of everything. Uh, I think it's kind of like what Scott was talking about earlier. We mix it up, man. You got them all the time. You got to find ways to kind of mix it up. You train hard. You train fast. You're organized. You're efficient. You have good training tempo. Training tempo is not there. Blow the whistle. Bring them up. Let's get, you know, let's get it straight and let's go back to work. Okay. Uh, routines. Uh, we know that use a four day split, but we train five days a week. But we'll have a, like a four-day split. I have used three-day where I'd lift Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you know, do a speed and power stuff on Tuesday, Thursday. I like it a lot. But my head coach gives me a calendar to first the year. Here's the calendar. We ain't changing nothing. You figure it out. So I have to build the program 
around that calendar that he set. So if he says you got five weeks in the winter, your winter program is five weeks this year, then I got five weeks, okay? So, you know, I just got to work with whatever coach gives me. We've been able to adapt. Another thing is going to the playoffs, and uh, I think this senior class played 55 games in four years. That's a lot of football, especially, at, you know, at this level. That's a lot of football. So, you know, when you're coming off a season, your in season is so long that you're kind of ready to move into the winter. But, you know, the first two and a half weeks, you got them by yourself. The second two and a half weeks, you got them with the coaches. And you know what that can turn into when they start kind of as uh, all in and mat drill type stuff. Uh, platform lifts daily, a variety of squats and presses, exercises on command. If we have a group that just is, you know, we'll, we'll start commanding stuff. If we can't get what we want, We'll do command. We haven't been able to, have to do that much lately. Uh, we try to set goals each training period for the winter and summer. Be, be very, very intentional about what we're looking for and what we're trying to do because every team is different. Uh, just start with warm-up. That just kind of sets the tone for the day, their mindset, their attitude, uh, kind of getting them in a good mood, getting them focused. Someday you may go in and you may I tell a little something, get them going. Some days you come in with that old... That, that work face on, know you're serious, but just whatever you got to do uh, to get them going. Uh, we always start with some type of mobility, just prepping the body for whatever training we're doing that day. Get the blood pumping, and then you're going to get what you emphasize, okay? Whatever you emphasize, that's what, what you're going to get. The old saying that you either coach it or allow it to happen. Man, I hate that because sometimes I'll see us doing things, and I say, man, I ain't coaching that, so I'm allowing it to happen. But you're going to get what you emphasize, Here's uh, just kind of a little warm-up here. Uh, these are videos. They're not playing right now, but they should be playing. But we always come out in a group. Um, this group will come out. So this is a group we'll do about, uh, say, three to five minutes as a group, just some dynamic movement, different types of, of runs and skips and swings. Then we'll break up into three separate groups. We always have some type of hurdle work where it's single, hurdle or they're they're lined up we do different movement patterns over those hurdles uh, this one right here is just some foam rolling maybe once of uh, once a week we may have a foam roll station depending on kind of what's going on with them so we change those those out uh, every day and then this one here coach Smo's got a group just working on some uh, just some hip mobility I think they went into some glute bridge work so that's kind of how it operates one group we do it we break into three they sprint around to all three. As soon as that's over, they meet at the weight room door. I, uh, I call them up, and then we're off and running. Okay. Uh, squatting, as far as building power, kind of that's ground-based stuff. I think we're all going to do that. We do traditional. We'll do safety bar. We've got duffalo bars. We'll do dynamic work uh, with bar speed. We may, we'll work some tsunami. we do a little bit of everything. All types of back squatting, front squatting, traditional Sometimes guys have issues with wrist and hands and you may have to do more of a bodybuilding type grip, zerchers, goblet, some type of a front squat, and then accommodations. Most of the accommodations we do are with chains, and they'll go up to about 100 plus pounds. Uh, I think it goes like maybe 40, 60, 80, up to 100. Uh, so we'll do some accommodation with some percents, maybe around 60, 65% on the bar for speed work. And then we'll do a variety of different types of jumps and hops and overhead squats. Uh, then we'll do a lot of single leg work. So when it comes to squatting, that's just kind of a little bit of a, a menu of what we will we'll do. Um, just a variety of, uh, here's a, a back squat. Just working our back squat here. Uh, guy up here just working front squats. This is probably a day that like we're hitting some singles. And then we do some box squats with chains. Just kind of working our hips back with the paws, driving off. Working with a Tendo or Gym Aware. This little box top right here, it's pretty neat. Uh, David Abernathy's here with total strength and speed. Those, those DC blocks that you have, you may have some, he designed that top. Me and him got together and we designed a very dense pad. It'll sit right on top of that so you can drop those things down as far as you want. But that's a pretty cool little box uh, to do some box squats with. So I think that's about 405. Gage is a fifth-year guy. I think he's around 700, and this kid's just a freshman. This is a speed day, just working like five to six sets of doubles or triples, okay? 
Uh, after we squat, we'll do some type of single leg exercise. This is, again, just a, a menu of exercises. Even each position may do different things each day. But I love to go out and take the linebackers and, and have a progression where we'll go out after we squat and we'll go out and we'll just load up sleds. We'll start with a lighter weight for distance runs, and then we'll begin to stack the weight, and then we'll shorten up the distance. So this is, they don't like this a whole lot, but this is some good stuff. Just some marches, just get it, start loading them up, getting them heavy, uh, start loading here, getting them heavy on some lunge walks, and then just some, some different uh, types of uh, single leg work there. Again, it's just your imagination and how, how your program works. So it's just an idea. Uh, pulling exercises, <clears throat> kind of different platforms. We're going to do uh, a, a triple extension, some hinging, got deadlift, traditional, traditional, got sumo, we got snatch grip, we got snatch grip with deficits, we do trap bar in season. Uh, we're going to use some bands and chains. Again, the majority is going to be with, with chains. Olympic lifts, full clean, power clean, hang cleans, clean pulls, different types of push presses and complexes. And then always adding, always doing single leg, single leg work, and then different jumps and throw variation, and then some kettlebell work with that. So this is just, uh, I think over here, just uh, power clean, just kind of working a full clean, pretty good clean. Got a little uh, hang clean going on here. Just a little heavy max effort day on some deadlifts, just some singles. A little sumo deadlift going on right here. And then this is a snatch grip, got a good wide grip with a deficit. It's not much, about a two inch block, but just working some, uh, some snatch grip work. So normally after we clean, we'll do some type of a, some type of a deadlift and then we'll vary the, uh, the intensity of those. But I uh, feel like that's really, really helped us uh, quite a bit. Uh, more explosive type exercises, just working different types of uh, Box squatting, some's just coming from a static position. Over here is a motor D lineman just kind of doing a little in-depth jump. Uh, we'll do some hang clean push presses. Uh, over here we'll just work some uh, squat to press. So just another way to kind of throw in some hinging and triple extension type, type work. And then uh, some of my, some other explosive things we'll do. Uh, we'll add after we clean, after we deadlift, we may work on some rotational lifts. Uh, do some old jammers. I don't know how many of you remember this thing right here. That's old power netics, man. That's old uh, Barney Fuller, probably 25 plus years old. We got one of those in there. I'll take the linebackers over. We'll have a circuit of some med ball work. Again, just an easy way to, to load. And then this little soup bone right here, just a, you know, inexpensive. You can get those on your landmines, throw a little band on there. If you just got some guys that are hurt, can't clean, can't press. Just another way to, uh, to get that work in. Uh, as far as pressing goes, we use a lot of uh, we shoulder saver or boards. We found that the shoulder savers work a little bit better because you can snap them on the bar. Uh, we, have a, we do the black pad, red pad, then a one board. So there's like three levels we'll work with. We'll rotate those. Uh, we'll do traditional, like a power program or periodization. We'll do neutral grip, close grip. We've got barrel bars. We'll do sub-maximal weight with chains for speed day. We'll do that once a week. Try to do that at least once a week. Slingshots. We get guys in season that's got some soft tissue issues going on. Uh, we'll throw the slingshot on and then overhead variations of that and then different types of uh, angles and presses there. Uh, in the middle, this is just a... Just kind of, it's like a two-board press. It's a little elite fitness. Just a little pad. You just snap it on. It's real easy. We pause all of those, just competition style on this. Make them pause it rather than just trying to bounce it up. We'll, uh, we'll pause it. Uh, here's, this would be more of a max force day. This would be more of a speed day, probably about 60, 65% with some chain weight. Trying to stop that bar right before it touches my chest, working on reversal strength, having a good speed day, moving that bar fast, more of a closer grip. Uh, in season, we'll do some neutral grip work. Okay, uh, this is a fat bar. We'll do the fat bar. We'll rotate at that end. And then for guys that have issues, maybe some soft tissue issues or shoulder problems, uh, days we do neutral grip, they can use the, uh, the barrel bar. Okay. Auxiliaries, just put, building that body armor, bodybuilding lifts to target all the different muscle groups, uh, just different variations where it's single arm, double leg, alternating. We will we'll change our rep speeds up. 
just to kind of change it up a little bit, do some eccentrics, do some pauses, uh, concentric, isometric, uh, some partial, full range, uh, contralateral, ipsilateral grip, change our grips around, do different equipment and attachments. So a lot of the things we'll do, like with our lap pulls and low rows, and I was all fat bars. So every bar we have is a, it's pretty thick. Uh, sets and rep variation, we'll go some heavy to light on auxiliaries. We'll go light to heavy. We'll do some density. Where we'll take the, the uh, same weight. And we'll try to get three sets of 10, let's say 100-pound dumbbell presses. Just work three sets of 10. See if you can get all three sets of 10. We do work sets to failure. We do what we call add sets. Uh, we'll do drop sets. We'll do rack runs. Where we'll put them on the rack, and we'll just phew, right down the rack, back to back to back. We'll do sets for time. So one set, maybe they got a minute and a half of whatever, and then we'll command. So there's a lot of, lot of things we can do on the auxiliary side. Just some sprinting and kind of change the direction. You know, we work a lot on starts, acceleration, top speed, work on deceleration, work on coming to balance, work on changing direction, redirecting. Our sprints, we have heels. We've got pretty good heels up there in the, in the, in the golden corners. Uh, we'll do chains. We've got run rockets we'll, we'll put them on. We'll go to the stadium, and then we'll do some competitive sprinting. Then agility-wise, it's just getting on and just deciding what kind of cone drills you want to do and, and, and doing it by position. But we'll do a ton of cone drills, a lot of bags, a lot of hoops, a lot of shuttles, uh, and a lot of that's built into the uh, little mat drill program we do. Here's just some guys just working on starts here. In about a five, ten yard start. Here's some uh, waterfalls here with the chain. Looks like they're working about 20 yards. Uh, it's right here in the middle. Guys are working run rockets. It looks like we're working about a 20 yard sprint with those. Uh, this little chase drill, just trying to catch the guy in front. And then this is uh, probably the first day of summer one right out here on this hill. Uh, I think the speed guys will work about 80 yards or so. Uh, the power speeders will work about 60 years or so, and then the big boys will work about 40. But we'll be out there spending a lot of time doing a lot of resistance type, type work. Uh, kind of a snapshot of our year. Uh, January, April is what we call the get ready phase. We just kind of came out of that. We're now into transformation, May to July. That's the transformation phase. Everybody's got all their evaluations from their coaches, from the position coach, from the strength coaches. Everybody's got an eval. Everybody knows what to do. Now it's time to transform yourself, transform your body, your mind, your spirit, whatever it may be, so that you're a better player in August when you come back. This is what we call the prime time phase right here, August to October. That's prime time, and this right here, is your championship season. That's your championship phase. So that's our cycle and how we, how we view it in season wise. Uh, going to go through it pretty quick. We're going to, uh, it's the longest training cycle of the year. The last few years has been 20 plus weeks of in season training. So I'm, uh, you know, kind of like Scott had said earlier, you know, I'm kind of waving it. I'm, I'm working up, unloading. And, you know, I kind of look at my work back, look at who we're playing. We'll just kind of run waves of cycles in uh, maybe every four weeks. If they're doing well, they're playing good, and we're playing a lot of people, we keep a play count as well. If we're playing a lot of people, and I may just keep it running. But it's just a sense you have. There's nothing like automatic, like we're going to stop here and deload. It's a feel that you have as a coach if you've been doing it uh, for, you know, for a good long period of time. Got to get stronger. Work as hard as you can. Train as hard as you can to under-train those guys. Um, you know, continue to load them up, continue to do ground-based work. The lifts don't change. Some guys will have some injuries. We don't have to work around stuff. We realize that. But we're going to continue to squat. We're going to continue to clean. We're going to continue to press. Uh, keep them bending. Keep them flexible. Make sure that, uh, you know, we keep them popping. Uh, you know, keep them full. Make sure we're working with our nutritionists, checking, making sure, that, you know, guys ain't getting sick. Make sure that our volume's kind of moderate on auxiliaries. Um, you know, don't get away from your, your foundation or your fundamentals of what you've been doing all year. Worst thing you can do is get to end season and quit doing all the things that got you there. Uh, that's just my opinion. Um, <clears throat> be willing to listen and adjust. Listen to your best players. What's my best guys telling me um, what's happening? Use the data that we're getting from Alex. Analyze that. Let him explain it to us. Make adjustments where we have to. And then bring that energy every day. And then our roles shift 
Okay, the strength coach in the summer, he's a different animal than he is in the fall. When August camp starts, you know, now you're kind of the soothing guy. You're trying to, you know, keep guys motivated, keep them healthy, keep them feeling good, encouraging them, especially hurt in that weight room, working with them. And, you know, now the coaches are kind of got their foot on them pretty good. So that's kind of how we work, kind of good cop, bad cop, you know. Um, and then echo, continue to echo Coach Sweeney's um, message. Uh, camp schedule, we're going to lift, uh, you know, three days a week. It's pretty simple. Some type of squat, some type of clean, some type of press. Auxiliary, staying healthy, feeling better, working with your nutritionist. Uh, In-season training, we're always going to have a dynamic. I have about 40 minutes maybe a week or 45 minutes, not much. So I get a Monday and a Wednesday. That's all I get. Uh, we're going to do a, some type of clean on a Monday. We're going to do a back squat, some type of max force work. Auxiliaries, that's kind of a rep range that we'll work with. Day two is more dynamic. That's what we call, we're just kind of prepping them, getting their mind right to be fast and explosive on Saturday. Trap bar days, dynamic back squat or box squat with tendos, some type of a press, maybe a neutral grip or a barrel bar or a fat bar. And that's kind of the rep ranges that we will work with right there. Okay. Power Hour, we're not going to spend a lot of time here, but this is kind of the foundation of our program. All of our red shirt guys, if you are red shirting during meetings, you come to the weight room. So we have a home game. They lift five days a week. A lot of that's teaching early. When we go on the road, they lift four days a week. So they get about 12 to 14 weeks of really, really hard, tough lifting. And, uh, and man, I'm telling you what, a lot of walk-ons in there, but there's also a lot of good scholarship guys uh, in that room as well. Strong, physical, um, trying to get them, get them tougher, having to work through a little adversity. We'll, we'll give them a break, probably about 30 minutes, hydrate them, feed them, talk to them, stretch them, and then they'll go out and they'll practice. Now, we'll vary that intensity based on what's going on. Like if it's a Tuesday practice, you know, we're not going to destroy them. If it's a Wednesday practice, we're not going to try to destroy them and hurt them or, or beat them up so they can't practice. But then you get into Thursday, and then Friday is Armageddon. I mean, and it's all, you know, it's Armageddon Day. They know we're going to do a bunch of arms on Friday and get ready for the weekend. So that's kind of how that works. Winter training, going to run through that pretty quick. Um, like I said earlier, my cycles are really short. Just want to get really good at basic things. Going to be progressive, work around lingering injuries. It's a new team, new journey. It's going to be new challenges for us. Uh, reset the accountability piece, get all that back in place. We're starting over. The culture's there. The foundation is there. Now we just go right back to work. Coaches are on the road. We're communicating with them. And then the stress. Now it's time to really begin to stress them, put some, start to load them back up, and uh, get them ready uh, for spring ball. Kind of reevaluate what, what we're doing. Hey, if we've won, let's change something. If we've lost, let's change something. We've got to continue to change things up, keep getting better, but not get too far away from what's got us to the, where we are today. Bringing that good juice every day. Our role as a strength staff switches again back to the kind of bad cop role and then echo Coach Sweeney's meeting. I'm going to just kind of throw it up here, what the, what the winner looks like, how it's broken down. It's going to be full cleans, heavy back squats on Monday. You know, I would squat on Friday heavier, but the way our skills and drills are set up, they have a program that they do outside of football, and uh, especially in the summer, that, that I just have to do what I have to do with that. But we do squat uh, on Monday. Uh, Tuesday is going to be, uh, we're going to work on speed development, linear speed, going to do a power program bench, max effort, some type of overhead and auxiliaries. Wednesday is a, a change of direction, short area, quickness stations. Thursday, heavy power clean, deadlifts, front squats, auxiliary, single leg work, conditioning. Friday is going to be some fundamentals of speed development, overhead, auxiliaries. And that's how the winter looks. Percentages, that's kind of what we did last year is five weeks real quick. Didn't hard, I don't think I ever made it to 100%. Couldn't do it in five weeks. It was dangerous. So I just had to go as far as I could go, and then I had to stop it. Uh, not going to do much with the all-in program here, but I'm going to kind of just flip those through and then uh, just kind of talk about springs a lot like in-season, okay? It's going to be about the same as in-season. It's like here's your in-season program. Here's your um, winter training program. The spring is somewhere in the middle, still going heavy, getting ready for the summer, and then transformation phase. I'm just going to show you what the workout looks like real quick. 
uh, dynamic, full clean bench on Monday, supersetting everything, uh, is always movement in that room. Tuesday's a, a linear speed day, heavy squat, single leg movement. Wednesday's dynamic work, what we call a player-led skills and drills, 6 a.m. Thursday, power clean, some type of close grip, auxiliary, short area quickness day. And then Friday, front squat, deadlifts, auxiliaries, and then working 90s, 100s, 110s. Okay, just kind of preparing them, and that's kind of what it looks like. Okay, uh, that's what we test, kind of work on that. Here's what I told you earlier. This is their story. This is what you're going to tell them when you leave. You're going to tell your story as a player. Okay. I don't really have time to go over much more. I've got to shut it down. Just a quick question or two. and I know that's kind of a lot, but that's what I wanted you to see, kind of what our program was like, how we organize it. That's just what we do. It works good for us, but we can still improve. We can still get better. We're trying to get better. That's why I'm here. This is my professional development weekend, taking a lot of notes. So I appreciate the guys that are speaking. I appreciate the coaches that... Uh, our high school coaches, we have a, a big, big uh, high school clinic, and I learn a lot from those guys when they come in. They've taught, they continue to teach me as well. So, Fellas, we're really tight on schedule, so if you've got questions, I know you've got great questions for Coach, but we probably need to keep moving. Well, we have to keep moving, so uh, I apologize, Coach. No, nah, you good. All right, guys, thank you very much. Thank you.